Over three years ago, I wrote a blog post detailing why I decided to cancel my Netflix account forever. It got some decent traffic initially, and continued to perform well in Google for a surprising amount of keywords. Then it slowly started to lose steam, bottoming out at an average of about 20 hits per day. Fair enough, I said to myself, there are a lot more people who love Netflix than hate it. But then something crazy happened. A massive global pandemic arrived on the scene and reshaped our society, locking everyone indoors for weeks. Everyone scrambled to come up with their best quarantine routine. As a result, people suddenly found themselves with a ton of free time on their hands. And what do most people default to when they have free time? Watching Netflix. And so, as I waited on hold with my fifth airline in one day, trying unsuccessfully to get a refund for one of my many canceled flights for my now canceled three month trip to Europe, I received my monthly email from Google Search Console. It's a summary of how my website visitors found me through Google and the keywords they used to do so. But this summary stood out from all previous ones. The top growing query for my website was the term, I hate Netflix. It was even more popular than rapid web launch itself. Hmm, how about that? Naturally, I was curious. I booted up my Google Analytics page to look at my traffic for this specific post over the last 90 days. And this is what I found. My traffic for this canceling Netflix post went from 20 visits per day to over 200 visits per day. And the dates almost exactly correlate to the beginning of most countries' lockdowns. In other words, as people watched more and more Netflix, they started to become aware of just how little value it was adding to their lives. The cancel Netflix train was chugging ahead full steam. As the post and video continues to grow, I thought it would be a good idea to write a new post and make a new video. I initially cut out all TV in general. Over time, I slowly discovered a handful of genuinely useful streaming services. These are my choices for healthy streaming alternatives to Netflix in order of most importance to me. But first, my criteria for what's considered a healthy streaming service. It's very simple. They're streaming services that are educational, promote good habits, don't contain graphic content, improve my mood, require a paid subscription, and are not Netflix, or one of a gazillion Netflix clones. Number one, The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses is a teaching company that has been around for decades. They produce college-level audio and visual courses. Prior to the rise of binge-from-home streaming services, the Great Courses were available via DVD for a one-time fee of around $60 per course. You've likely sifted through a couple of these in your local library over the years. Coming to terms with their new reality and recognizing that this is no longer a viable pricing model, the Great Courses launched their own online streaming service in 2016. Dubbed as the Netflix of Learning, The Great Courses Plus offers nearly half of their content for a modest monthly fee of $19. Considering there are about 300 courses to choose from, at about 20 to 30 lectures per course, you're getting an immensely fantastic bang for your buck. If you're a numbers fan, it's about a $6,000 value. I love The Great Courses Plus. There's a reason why I've listed it as my number one favorite streaming service. I've only had it for three months, and already I've binged through courses about the Roman Empire, the Celtic world, and beer. And again, just to be clear, these are not your quick cash grab online courses produced by your local Joe Schmo in his mom's basement. They're a series of lectures taught by university professors with high production value. Some courses are definitely better than others. You'll find that you'll naturally gravitate towards the teaching style of some professors and be turned off by others. That's normal. If you're someone who requires a bit more structure with their learning strategy, you can even follow one of their learning paths to really master a particular subject. Overall, it's a great learning experience with immense value. My only regret is that I didn't discover this earlier. The Great Courses Plus costs $19.99 a month, or $10 a month when paid quarterly. There's a 14-day free trial with all plans and 
you can stream via your online browser, iOS, Android, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Kindle Fire. Number two, Magellan TV. Magellan TV describes their documentary streaming service as television worth watching. It offers a deep collection of high quality documentaries from a wide variety of producers. Launched by Alliant Content LLC, they have a super cool website by the way, it aims to be a streaming service that, quote, exemplifies the great traditions of documentary filmmaking, the quest to capture unique imagery, venture into the unknown, and tell compelling stories based on the insights of historians, scientists, and explorers. Magellan TV offers over 1,500 documentaries to choose from, with new content being added every week. I found the quality of Magellan TV to be the highest among the documentary streaming services currently available. I particularly love the wide selection of BBC documentaries that are available on the platform. They've also put a great deal of effort into designing a visually enticing experience. From the thumbnail designs, to the choice of color, to the scrolling speeds, everything is done with the user experience in mind. Magellan TV costs $6.99 a month, $23.96 quarterly, or $59.88 annually. There's a 7-day free trial for the monthly plan, and a 14-day free trial for the quarterly and annual plans. And you can stream it via your online browser, iOS, Android, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. Number three, Curiosity Stream. You've likely seen these guys promoted by a YouTuber or two. Curiosity Stream is the brainchild of John Hendricks, the founder of the Discovery Channel. It was launched back in 2015. Similar to Magellan TV, its sole purpose is to produce and distribute high quality documentaries. To date, they house over 3,000 documentary films and series, and boast over 13 million subscribers worldwide. Curiosity Stream comes in at a close third in my list of favorite healthy streaming alternatives, just behind Magellan TV. In particular, I appreciate the variety of types of content that Curiosity Stream offers. There are times where I really don't feel like diving into a 90-minute documentary or a six-episode series. Sometimes you just need a quick hit. Curiosity Stream has a ton of content that falls into the 15 to 30 minute range. Perfect for when I'm settling in at my 11.30 a.m. hash brown veggie egg medley brunch. I'll admit, I have come across a higher number of duds on this platform than any of the others, but I attribute that to them not being as selective as they should be with their distributing licensing. For example, they have 3,000 pieces of content versus most other services, 500 to 1,500 pieces of content. Curiosity Stream costs just $2.99 a month for HD or $19.99 annually. If you want it 4K, it's $9.99 a month or $69.99 annually. But there's no free trials currently. And you can stream it on pretty much anything you can think of. I'm not even going to bother listing them all. Number four, Canopy. Canopy is an on-demand streaming service for libraries and universities. It offers both films and documentaries, most of which are classic films. It was founded by an Australian entrepreneur, Olivia Humphrey, in 2008. You need to be a member of a university or your local public library in order to access this streaming service. The good news, it's 100% free, with a few caveats. You can watch eight different films or documentaries each month, with the counter resetting on the first of the month. However, there is a credit-free section where you can watch as much as you want. Just don't expect anything mind-blowingly awesome. Also, there's a big perk for the parents out there. Canopy Kids is completely free. Unlimited educational and wholesome entertainment for your kids. Not bad, eh? especially since Netflix and YouTube are becoming far less appealing for parents. Canopy is completely free, as such there's no need for a free trial. And you can stream Canopy via your online browser, iOS, Android, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Kindle Fire, Android TV, Chromecast, Apple TV, and a bunch of smart TVs. Number five, Skillshare. Skillshare was founded in 2010 by Michael Karnjana Prakorn. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely butchered that. Sorry, Michael. And Malcolm Ong. 
it's a streaming service that tries to do things a little differently. Quote, the majority of courses focus on interaction rather than lecturing, with the primary goal of learning by completing a project. The main course categories are creative arts, design, entrepreneurship, lifestyle, technology, and many more subtopics. Rather than watching movies, documentaries, or series, you'll be taking part in online quote-unquote classes. You won't have a live on-demand teacher, however. All of the video content is produced in advance. Skillshare claims to have nearly 30,000 online classes to choose from. The vast majority of these are paid. However, there are a few hundred free ones. So here's the thing. I tried Skillshare. I liked it. However, I can safely say that all of the content I watched can easily be found on YouTube for free. And at what I consider to be a fairly steep price tag, I simply wouldn't recommend it personally. That said, they do offer a massive free trial. So be sure to try it for yourself and let me know all the reasons why I'm wrong and or a moron. Skillshare Premium costs $19.99 a month. There's a 14 day free trial. However, they are currently extending that free trial to 60 days. And you can stream Skillshare via your online browser, iOS, and Android. Finally, number six, YouTube. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Seriously, Patrick, YouTube, I already know about the most popular video platform in the world. I am equally and painfully aware of how much time I waste on it. I hear you. However, there's a piece of that complaint that is oh so important. That bit about wasting time. Because here's the thing, YouTube is simultaneously incredible and underwhelming, exciting and terrifying, funny and sad, educational and time suck. It all comes down to how you choose to use it. And since we've been talking about using healthy streaming services that educate, inspire, motivate, and improve well-being, how can I not mention YouTube? I've learned so much from YouTube. It played a key role in my building of a successful web design business. But let's not forget my criteria for evaluating streaming alternatives to Netflix. One of them being, it must be a paid subscription. Well, sure, YouTube is free, but they also have YouTube Premium. So go buy that if you feel like you must maintain the integrity of my content. YouTube Premium costs $11.99 per month. There's a 13 day free trial, and because it's YouTube, you can literally stream it everywhere and on everything. So to conclude, have you ditched Netflix already? Are you willing to cut out the rest of them too? You know, the Amazon Primes, the Disney Plus, Apple TV, Hulu, blah, blah, blah. What alternative streaming services do you enjoy? Let me know. 